Uh, my name is Fran, I'm a data science lead at Uber, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes a life of a trip. In particular, what happens when you push that one button uh, on an Uber ride. Before we get started, a little bit about myself. I have a PhD in theoretical chemistry from UC Berkeley. I then did a postdoc in approximate quantum dynamics at Caltech. And then I joined Uber about two and a half years ago uh, in late 2014. Um, I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed my time at Uber. I think it's an amazing company. There's a great combination of highly complex um, problems to be solved in a cross-functional environment, um, working with engineers, with other data scientists and analysts, with product managers and design. I started off as an individual contributor and was the founding member of the Intelligent Real-Time Anomaly Detection Team. I'm going to briefly talk a little bit about this technology towards the end of the talk. And then since I've moved into a leadership role, um, leading five teams within our data science platform uh, teams. And temporarily, I'm also heading performance marketing analytics, which has also been extremely interesting. Um, almost five years ago, so half a dec decade ago to this day, March 14th, 2012, was the last time on the Uber system that went away with a single second without being on a trip, which is really fascinating. And you can see here how we progress towards that uh, on this chart below. Another couple of stats. So we've uh, been around for about six plus years. We're now in 73 countries in more than 450 cities. And we've done over 2 billion rides and counting. And the really fascinating part is that going from 1 billion trips to 2 billion trips just took us approximately six months. So what really lies behind when you open the Uber app? So first, you get bootstrapped. Then uh, we identify where your pickup location is. You do some destination search. You then get a confirmation with an upfront price. You then request a car. And then you get a car dispatched, and you see your ETA. And finally, you're on trip. Seems pretty simple. But if you look behind the scenes, it's a very, very complex ecosystem of thousands of microservices that we have. This is just a very small snapshot of um, the tracing. So we have over 2,500 microservices, and more than 100 of those pertain to the core trip flow. We currently are um, having four languages in production, Python, Java, Go, and Node.js. We've built an in-house um, database structure called SchemaLess, which is for long-term data storage. Um, we also use RIAC and Cassandra for high availability and low latency demands. SchemaLess is replacing slowly MySQL and Postgres instances, and Cassandra replaces RIAC for speed and for performance. We also have uh, distributed storage and analytics um, using Hadoop uh, warehouses, and for logging, we use Kafka. In order to transform our data streams, uh, we use uh, Storm and Spark uh, in order to get business metrics at the end of the day. Here are a couple of the technology principles that we operate on. Firstly, scalability. As you've seen, we have grown extremely quickly within a very short amount of time. But we also have many different localized events, such as New Year's Eve or Halloween, that are extremely large days for us in the Uber ecosystem, where we see extremely large demand spikes beyond the underlying fast growth that we have been experiencing. We obviously want to maintain extremely large availability. We're striving for four nines or 99.99% availability, which just gives you over four minutes of downtimes per month. And this really is to ensure that for the riders who are utilizing Uber, the transportation can be truly as reliable as running water. And for the driver partners who are utilizing our platform, that they have the opportunity to earn a living uh, on the platform. We also have to bear in mind that we're a real-time system, so we need to have sub-second end user latency. And finally, we need to build our stack in such a way that it's flexible. It's not only about uh, moving people around anymore. It's about also good transfers and many different other things. Here to name a, a couple, Uber Chopper, Uber Kittens, so special events come into play as well. But in order to ma make magic, the life of a trip goes far beyond infrastructure and data engineering that I showed you just now. It also encompasses uh, many, many different city teams across the globe. City teams that make a special events possible 
in coordination with the engineering and data infrastructures that we have been building out. What, for example, the Uber movers, the Uber choppers that I just mentioned earlier, say I do with Uber on demand, getting married, uh, Uber kittens, um, also some uh, the events where we uh, give out uh, FIFA EA sports um, t uh, videos, and then also things like health, Coachella, and o Uber boat. And then on top of this, we have uh, a large data science team. Data science um, that reaches into the marketplace and maps data science. So these are the data science teams that would probably come to mind first when you open the Uber app, such as the advanced dispatching algorithms that are being developed, such as, for example, forward dispatching. Also, of course, our dynamic pricing stack um, that comes into play here. And things like ETAs and routing. But then there's also data science teams that really enable us to like work at scale, that provide platforms and tools um, in order to help empower other data scientists, analysts, engineers, product managers to quickly iterate on various different projects and to ensure that we have high availability in these services and systems. These are teams that are cross-functional in nature, that have collaboration between engineering, product, design, data science, and analytics. And here I'm showing just a couple of the platforms that we have been building out over the years at Uber, including things like the machine learning platform, forecasting, the experimentation platform that you'll be hearing, out, hearing more about later in the afternoon, anomaly detection, customer obsession, and our communications platform. So a couple I want to highlight here that come back to life of a trip and making life of a trip possible, especially at scale, are, for example, our hardware capacity planning efforts. Um, this is a team of data scientists who works very, very close in collaboration with our site reliability engin en engineers. So as you can see here at the top, the number of trips have been increasing quite substantially over the years, over New Year's Eve. In 2015, we had uh, 2 million trips on the Uber platform. In 2016, 5. And just past New Year's Eve, we hit 15 million trips. We obviously have to understand our hardware capacity needs well in advance, months in advance, um, in order to order these hardware, this hardware and to make it available. And not only do we have to know how many trips in aggregate happen at this moment in time, but also on an hourly or even minute by minute basis. And so we have developed proprietary forecasting algorithms that allow us to accurately predict an hourly demand for special events months in advance. New Year's Eve is just one of those. I mentioned also Halloween and many, many of the other events as well. And here on the right-hand side, you can see a visualization of the last year's New Year's Eve and the hotspots showing how many trips occurred uh, in each of the cities across the globe. So what makes uh, forecasting at Uber different? There are a couple of areas. One is that in addition to the temporal component, we also have uh, the spatial component as well. And then finally, uh, in addition to batch forecasting, for example, in the dispatch domain or marketplace domain, we also have to have real-time components in this, which makes it additionally challenging. As you've seen just in the previous slide um, from the New Year's Eve example, we're a very young company that grows extremely rapidly. So actually, we have very few data points over the last couple of years in order to make accurate predictions. And so coming up with novel um, algorithms is extremely important. And then the other thing that is very interesting is that we have a lot of um, different events that are happen happening at high frequency. Think about Halloween and New Year's Eve as just being two of those. But then we have weather events. Uh, a large thunderstorm can like make people take Uber more, for example, and you have high demand. Or, for example, if a Justin Bieber concert is finishing, you can imagine a lot of people trying to get an Uber ride home. So throughout the city and with each heartbeat of the city, we have various different events that are happening, and we need to accurately model these events and anticipate those. And the other example I want to give uh, around scalability is the availability component. So as I mentioned in a previous slide, we're really striving towards four nines of availability, and we do this also via intelligent alerting. Here again, a really amazing collaboration between um, site reliability, engineering, observability, and data science teams 
who are building intelligent algorithms that are cutting edge and have broken new ground in this field. So as I mentioned, four nines of availability re means really that you only have one minute per downtime per week. So this means we really have to take the human out of the loop. We um, have to have a completely self-healing system. Not only do we have to detect outages or system outages that might be occurring within one minute, but we also have to then mitigate these outages and resolve them uh, within this moment of time. A couple of challenges on this front is that we have over 500 million metrics that we're tracking at Uber currently. So you can imagine that setting static thresholds by hand is out of the question. Also given the underlying growth that we're experiencing, the day and night cycles that you've seen in the introductory video, and how different uh, every day might look from another one due to the events that I talked about just earlier. So this is really not surprisingly still an open research question at that scale, at this time to detection, and also with the precision and recall that we have to offer. Because at the end of the day, every alert uh, is sent to an on-call engineer and potentially in the middle of the night. And so we've been working very actively at developing novel methods here. And as I mentioned, we have um, a couple of patents in this space and broken new ground. And uh, here's the output of one of the algorithms that we have developed. Um, in red uh, and in yellow, you can see the upper and the lower thresholds uh, that have been produced by these algorithms, respectively. And in blue, I filled uh, out, after the fact, the data that we have gotten in. So you can really see how nicely um, the upper and the lower threshold follow the actual patterns um, of this blue time series. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can see a graph that really shows us what is possible with dynamic thresholds, which wouldn't be possible with our standard, more traditional static thresholds that would be just a straight line. In that the maximum of the lower threshold actually exceeds the minimum of the upper threshold, just a couple of hours in between. And then I want to close um, by saying the life of a trip really evolves around the driver partners and the riders who are using and making this trip possible, sprinkled in with some of our Uber technology that you're going to see today. <laughs>